Are we headed for a real estate crash? That's one of the questions I get asked a lot that will definitely have an impact on home sellers, home buyers, and home owners over the next several months and possibly years. My take on it may surprise you. So if you're interested to find out, stick around as we talk housing correction or housing crash coming up next. Will there be a crash? I like to say, what's your definition of crash? A 20% or greater reduction in the average home prices over the next few years? That's typically what defines a crash. I would say borderline, maybe crash, more likely a serious correction. Locally, we are already at a 7% decline in prices just since June of this year. So it's not if prices are gonna go down, it's by how much and for how long. Part of the current issue is our mortgage meltdown. Applications for typical home loans just hit an all time low. Not since 2010 or the middle of the last real estate bubble have we seen so few new applications for loans. As can be expected, buyers are digging their heels in and refusing to be part of exorbitant high home prices, especially in view of economic uncertainty and rocketing interest rates. All this means demand is easing and supply increasing. Luckily, we have also see, seen days on market increase consistently over the last several months giving sellers and listing agents pause. Sure, this is also typically the slowest time of year traditionally for real estate, but we are seeing more than just a seasonal adjustment. Yes, the higher price points are taking a harder hit as would be expected, but all price points are feeling the pressure and have seen reductions. If current present listings aren't priced according to the current market, things may not go so well. Comps based on six months ago or even three months ago aren't currently valid anymore. Right now, it's a very fine art to establish home values. Careful consideration must be placed on perceived price point, neighborhood and location, as well as overall marketing appeal, all of which are in a dynamic state of flux. Many sellers aren't getting it right the first time and then end up going through some painful price adjustments, even including median priced homes, which are currently at just over a half million dollars in our local market. And truly what matters may not be how inventory compares with 2019 or 2020, but what economic advisors call inventory velocity or how much and how fast inventory is surging and how much it will continue to do so into the future. New construction is a critical factor here as there are many new homes already in the pipeline scheduled for upcoming completion. Nationally, builders have over 2 million homes that they have started previously and are just now starting to come to market. Many of these were built on speculation and are coming up for sale as we slip into a recession. Given this is a bit more of a national trend, but if you buffer the bigger national economic outlook with an optimistic micro view locally, we are seeing signs of an upcoming potential increase in inventory. Things like we are seeing new build incentives and discounts to entice buyers to purchase just as new contracts are being canceled with people backing out because of cold feet are no longer able to qualify for financing. Couple that with a delayed builder backlog of construction that will hit the market locally over the next year or so, and you have a recipe for a minor or major correction over the next few years. I believe all of this will precede even grander price drops than we have already seen. Back to the real question, how much? My best guess is, and this is truly an educated guess, is that we will see prices dip in relation to the overvaluation, similar but not as hard or as deep as the markets like Seattle, Las Vegas, Phoenix, or Boise. Low double digit drops are certainly a possibility. Yet some insist there's an inventory shortage, not excess. 
But here are some interesting statistics to consider. Since 1960, the number of people per housing unit in America has dropped from 3.5 to 2.5. So we have fewer people per housing unit today than 50 years ago. Meanwhile, the vacancy rate at each new census has been consistently increasing, which makes sense because with fewer people per housing unit, the vacancy is obviously going to go up. The shortage we did see over the last few years was caused in part by COVID, low interest rates, and the related buying frenzy with cheap money, read sub 3% interest rates, which painted a low supply market perception during that period, but wasn't entirely accurate of the long range housing outlook. So there's a really good chance we will see further increases in inventory moving forward. So that's the data I've been crunching, which I know Know, generally bucks the trend of what most people in real estate sales are saying right now. But I'm not here to make a sale at the cost of someone else's future. I will give it to you as straight as I see it, no agenda attached. And you may ask, what's the bottom line and where will it all wash out? In my mind, there's a distinct possibility that we will see levels close to 2017 and 2018 as context for the extent of the correction, and that could mean price drops of as much as 15 to 20% total by the time it's all said and done. Like I mentioned earlier, home prices nationally have already dipped over 6% from the high in June of this year, and that's according to an NPR article by Chris Arnold. And then there's Lawrence Yun, the chief economist at the National Association of Realtors, who just recently relayed that home sales are down almost 20% compared to this time last year. And then take into account current mortgage purchasing power. With interest rates now well over 6% and expected to climb yet again before they start to come down, the average borrower's current purchasing power has dropped some 45% or almost half of what it was a year ago. This is definitely giving buyers more reason to sit it out, which is just another cause reflecting the upcoming inventory increase. Yet prevailing media likes to profess there's no upcoming excess, but instead a nationwide shortage. Maybe so, but let's see where we are in a year to 18 months. Currently in Clark County, we are at two months or more of available inventory. A little over a year ago, we were at less than two weeks of housing supply and burning through that so fast it never really even had a chance to be counted as inventory. And just for the sake of definition, six months of inventory is considered a balanced market, which we haven't seen since 2012 and the rebound after the last housing bubble. Then there's the Fed's current position on where the housing industry is considered secondary to consumer economics. And their position is basically just to throw housing under the bus. Here is a direct quote from Chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell. Quote, if you're a home buyer, somebody young, looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. We need to get back to a place where supply and demand get back together and where inflation is down low again and mortgage rates are low again, unquote. So even the Fed is telling young buyers to wait until things adjust to make a purchase. They are purposely trying to influence real estate values by increasing interest rates in a perceived effort to stall and reverse wildly escalating home prices. And how far will they go to meet that objective? Maybe they're all looking at history, which is by definition a method for observing past experiences and learning from what has happened previously to hopefully avoid the same potential pitfalls in the future. So even though most professionals are saying there's no comparison, to the crash of 07, 08, I get much of my data from analysts like Poison Ivy Zellman, who predicted that catastrophe long before its peak and ended up taking serious heat for doing so. She almost lost her job and ended up with the moniker Poison Ivy when she disagreed with bullish housing market pundits early in that previous bubble. 
back then in 2006 when Toll Brothers executive Bob Toll said that the housing market had bottomed out, a well-researched Zellman quipped back, what Kool-Aid are you drinking because I want some? And as we all well know, Zellman's housing bus fears proved more than correct as we plunged into a housing recession in 2008 that lasted several more years. Zellman declared a bottom to the crash in 2012 and was basically bullish on housing up until last year. In a recent podcast, she brought us all up to speed saying, so right now we are getting a backlash on the change of direction from free money to now the rise in rates and inflation. So the market is poised for a fairly significant correction. Couple that with her comments about increased inventories now in overpriced regions of the country and the increased negativity among current buyers over high interest rates, inflated home values, and economic instability. And it all gives credence to her forecast that we are just beginning to see a significant downturn. Selman has stated she thinks this trend will continue through 2023 into 2024 with low to mid single digit price drops and that's on the conservative side. So what does that mean in our local narrative? In our region, I wouldn't be surprised by a slow drop of 15 to 20% from our peak this last June taking place over the next few years. It certainly could fall more than that if our month over month current drop is any indicator, which has been greater this time than the start of our previous real estate fiasco back in 07 and 08. And if that is a true indicator, and it may well be, there could be some additional relief for home buyers on the horizon and maybe even some deep discounts in certain overpriced markets. But hey, I'm no wizard and I don't have a crystal ball to peer into and give you a guaranteed look at the future. So all of this is just my opinion based on what I'm seeing. And of course, each family, couple, or group will obviously base any real estate decisions on their own personal situation and current need. There are many personal factors that figure into these important decisions such as marriage or divorce, job relocation, health concerns, and being closer to family, just to name a few. These and other personal reasons can affect home purchasing motivation even more than economic factors. So be advised to gather as much unbiased information as possible to help make your decisions and find a trusted real estate advisor to help sift through all the data. Look to make the best financial decisions you can make moving forward based on your own personal position and current financial outlook. So as always, if you found this interesting or this video valuable, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us with the algorithm. As always, stay healthy, happy, and optimistic, and I will see you in the next episode of Cascade Living.